hi welcome to Tierra Latrice this channel I focus on God I focus on womanhood motherhood and just faith today I'm going to be talking about 10 things that I have learned about Jesus in the 10 years that I've been walking with him so if you're interested in these things make sure you keep watching welcome guys um here at Tierra Latrice we focus on biblical principles biblical topics any questions concerns and just my life and walk with Christ and today I'm going to talk about um, a few things that I've just learned about God and guys still learning about God um, as I have been walking for uh, walking with him coming on now 10 years so these are just 10 things and I wrote them down so this will not be this super long video um, but let's get started all right, the first one, the Bible is about God and not about me. Growing up, a lot of times when like preachers would be talking about God or talking about the scriptures, they were always pointing outward to me, to how this makes me better, this makes me feel better, uh, this makes me better as a person or better as a Christian. It never really focused on the context, the audience, and the writer of who the scriptures were literally talking about. They were always outward focusing and some way manipulated even at times to make me look at me rather than look at God so that was one big thing that I learned about like reading scriptures and even pr the principles godly principles and, and teachings um, is to always point to God and in light of God in light of the revelation of God through the scriptures what does that say about me and my relationship with him my relationship with myself and my relationship with people so that was like a major major one the Bible is not about Tierra and this love story, romantic story about God, how about how God saved Tierra because she was just so amazing and he just so needed her. No, it has nothing to do with that. It has all to do with God and his glory. And so that was a major, major thing that I've learned about um learned about God walking with him. Another thing that I learned, God always protects. He always protects his children now sometimes that protection can be <laughs> it, can, it can be a sting and what i mean by that is sometimes he may be protecting you from a prayer that you're asking so you can be asking for a particular thing and it's not according to his will and he knows that it's not good for you so it looks like an unanswered, unanswered prayer but in reality it was protection whether it's protection physically whether it's protection financially relationally emotionally like he comforts those who run into him. He says that I am a strong tower and the righteous run into me and they are safe. So he is a strong tower. We don't have to fear. We don't have to be dismayed because he is our God. And it's the fact that he is our God that we don't have to fear. We are always protected. I am always protected no matter the situation or the circumstance. My God is mighty and my God is mighty to save and he's mighty to protect. So that was enough. That was the second thing that I've learned walking with Jesus is my God protects number three where God is there's grace and what I mean by that is a lot of times when we want to venture into different things whether it's like a project or a career decision a life decision um, we can get into our own might we can get into our own mind and what we feel like we can do in our own strength and what I have found with walking with God is when I start getting weary and when I start getting overwhelmed I oftentimes check and say okay who am I depending on and where is the grace for what I'm doing cuz cuz nine times out of ten not that it's easy cuz grace doesn't mean that it's easy it means that it's possible so when I am I'm doing something if I don't feel the grace meaning even though it's hard for example I'm in the process of writing a book there are times where I don't want to write but I still feel the grace to write and so I have learned like where there is grace there's God I can tell the difference between I don't want to do it but I have the grace to do it versus I don't have the grace to do it and if I continue in trying to do it myself it's not going to end well and so I've learned how to decipher and I'm still learning how to decipher between the two and recognize that where God is leading me he will provide the grace to sustain me number four you need godly friends <laughs> 
that is one thing that I've learned and I've had the blessing of having godly friends from the very first moment of the very first steps and walk and my walk with Christ he has surrounded me with like-minded women and not just like-minded women women that was that were way more mature spiritually than me to help counsel me to disciple me to sharpen me that we sharpen each other um to accountability um it is so important to have I've learned it's so important to have godly friends who know the word and, and have the spirit of God to help them rightly decipher the word and hear from God because it's been so many times where I've received so much encouragement um a push in the right direction so much prayer God's prayer friends that pray <laughs> that you can call on and pray with that will fast with you for the good things you know they'll mourn when you mourn they'll celebrate and rejoice when you are rejoicing um it is so important to have those people who are plugged in and genuinely connected to God in your life because they see things God will use them to to call things and see things that maybe you don't see uh they help you with repentance help you with different spiritual convictions help you with different wisdom because they are authentically plugged into God so it is so important to have a, a, a tribe or even if it's that one person of people who are genuinely connected to God and who you can call friends. Number five, it is always important, just like godly friends, to have godly spiritual authority. Yes, keyword authority, meaning someone over you, someone that you are really held accountable to. And oftentimes these are our pastors. They may be elders. They may be women and women ministries. Someone who I, I often found more helpful were seasoned, more seasoned in the faith, more seasoned in their walk with Christ that you can lean into, especially for me as a wife. I have found so much counsel and wisdom and help in regards to leaning into women who have been married for a long time and have been walking this walk out with Jesus in marriage. And so, and I'm held accountable to them. I'm able to be transparent and vulnerable with them. And they tell me, okay, Tierra, mm -mm, nah, sis, that ain't right. Or they'll be like, okay, that's the right thing to do. Even though you're not seeing the fruit of it, continue to persevere, continue to stand in God's truth, you know, to help teach me, to preach the word to me, to minister the word to me, some type of spiritual authority that, that knows you. I know sometimes they're like bigger church is a little bit hard because you can kind of get lost in the sauce. However, search out ask God to help you just search out for someone who is more seasoned in the faith that, um, that you can kind of lean into for God uh, to use as well as be used by God for them. Number six, if you don't get none from this video, prayer is not optional. Okay, guys. Now, I understand prayer is a spiritual muscle right so when you're just coming to the faith these are there there are various muscles that you're working out and that you're growing in you don't come and be rebirthed into the family and come out a grown adult so as you continue to grow in the faith and the growing the knowledge and the wisdom of god and as he's sanctifying your heart and your mind prayer is like a crucial part guys it is like because think about it Prayer is our communication mode with God. It's, the, it's how we talk and commune with our Father. And so, you know, first what I learned was like, prayer doesn't have to be this long, extended, thus says the Lord, oh God Almighty thing, you know, which is what I thought in the beginning. It was more Pharisee like, like who can do the longest prayer? Who can pray the longest? I learned it was the heart behind prayer. And so what God is constantly cultivating in me is a desire to want to pray. And that's when I knew there was a heart change. It was like, no, I really want to talk to my God. Like, if I ain't talked to him all day, this is a problem. Like, I, by the end of the night, I'm thinking, wait, hold on. Why didn't I talk to him? Okay, let's talk, God. <laughs> you know, and not let's, like, let Tierra talk. Like, I want to hear you. What do you want to say to me um, concerning this thing? Not just, you know, I'm just praying for a specific need or a request. But, God, I just want to commune. Like, how are you doing? <laughs> like, really? Um, and I've learned it's not an option. To have a prayerless life is to have a faithless life. And so... To walk with him and not pray is like being married to your husband but never talking to him. Just living in the same house as roommates. And prayer is a is a is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful method to increase intimacy with you and God. And it's absolutely necessary. It is it is dangerous 
to have a prayerless life as a Christian. Danger is dangerous. And so that's one thing that I have learned and that I have become more disciplined in. And then as the discipline turned into like an enjoyment, like I'm, I'm, I'm excited to spend that time with God or, and I, and I mean, the prayer can be just be driving in a car and just talking to him, you know, as I'm washing the dishes, you know, just taking that time to mentally disconnect from everything and just to hone into my relationship with, with Jesus and see what he wants to say. Um, so yeah, prayer is not an option. It is absolutely mandatory. And again, it's actually dangerous to have a prayerless life as a Christian. So if you're not praying, pray about that. <laughs> Number seven, our plans are not always aligned with God's plans. That is something that I have learned, <laughs> honestly, the hard way. So when God says his thoughts and his ways are above our thoughts and our ways, it is so true. We can think, it says so a man can think he's going in the right direction, but it really leads to destruction, right? And so that's why we're supposed to constantly submit our plans to God. And what I realized is just because I have a good idea or just because it's smart does not mean that it's wise. And so a lot of things I was just like, okay, I'm just going to do this and I'm going to do that. Didn't really talk to God because, you know, it, it, it'll work out. It sounds like a good idea. And I realized like not every good idea God is a God idea. And my plans are not always his plans he may be leading me in a completely different direction than my thought pattern and so it's so important for me to pray and ask him like you know i have this desire is this is this something that you would like me to get into is this something that you um that would be glorifying to you check my heart motives why am i doing it um and sometimes like honestly god has halted me on a few things and led me in a complete different direction and so it's so important to be flexible with your with your desires flexible with your plans because oftentimes god's plans are not the same however they are so much better than you could have ever planned it even though sometimes it doesn't feel that way or look that way and so being able to be flexible and not hold on to things too tightly oh gosh i i i have learned i am constantly learning just to not hold on to things topics uh dreams visions too tightly because just in case god decides to move in a different move me in a different direction so always remember that sometimes your plans do not always align to what god's plans is so it's always important that when you have these thoughts and these inspirations to pray about them and ask god what is his plan and then go that direction okay number eight forgive quickly now we all know all of us because we live in a world with imperfect people and we're imperfect ourselves, there's always offense. There always is hurting. Just living in this fallen world. And what I have learned and I'm continuously learning is to forgive quickly. You know that saying when they always, they're like, you know, you don't forgive for the other person. You forgive for yourself. Like, guys, don't get me wrong. No, you forgive for both. However, there is some truth in that statement because holding on to bitterness and resentment and unforgiveness, it is a ball of chains around your neck. And so what I have learned is whenever I'm hurt, whenever I'm disappointed, whenever, um, whatever that causes me to feel in a bitter state. I actively and intentionally stop and choose to forgive. Now, does that always mean that my emotions align with my choice to forgive? Absolutely not. But what I have learned is God has given me the choice to be able to forgive through his spirit. Because what he has done, I don't have to walk around bitter or mad at people for what they've done to me. I, don't, I have a choice now not to live according to how people have treated me. So I can free myself of the burden of what was what I feel. And I can also free people from the shame and guilt of what they may have done. And so I've learned to just forgive quickly and be gracious. Abound in grace with people. Always looking to be empathetic. Always looking to hear God's voice and see God's see see through God's eyes with other people that may have caused you to like you know not want to forgive them now again this is in the context of not like domestic violence and you stay with the per not not that type of context uh of forgiving and staying and staying in a bad situation because there are boundaries that should be there um when it comes to protecting protecting the space that God has given you however 
you still forgive like still and forgive and asking God to help you forgive God this is another spiritual muscle like prayer is like forgiveness is not something that we innately in our nature human nature want to do or think that we uh should do that people deserve it um but when you really recognize how much grace and mercy has been shown to you and the forgiveness of the cross through Christ Jesus it's kind of hypocritical not to so uh I've learned and I'm continually learning to forgive quickly forgive 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 and last but not least, number 10. God cares more about quality than he does about quantity. And what I mean by that is God will allow you to go around the same mountain, just like the Israelites were in that wilderness for 40 years. He will allow you to go through that same mountain in order for you to get the lesson. He cares more about your heart than he does about your actions and behavior modification. He cares about the internal things, the things of the heart, the things of the soul that he cares about you just being able to change up some behaviors. Um, and there have been many lessons in my life where I have had to go around that mountain multiple times through different situations or I've had to go around a different mountain that was maybe in a higher mountain and go around that a couple of times until the heart was dealt with. And, uh, and I've, I've learned so much about obedience concerning those things that when I, when I'm in a tough place that I'm not trying to, or a tough season, I'm not just trying to run out of it, but that I will stand firm and see the salvation of my Lord and I will allow him to do his perfect work and work in me that I will allow him to deal with my heart to deal with my mind no matter how tough the situation is that i will stand that i won't resist his discipline that i won't resist this season or what he is causing because one thing i do know is that he causes everything to work together for my good so no matter how difficult or tough the season is the lesson that is to be learned out of that is way more glorious than the things that i'm encountering in, in the natural right and so he cares so much about the quality he's not saying oh you only go around that you know i'm only gonna give you one circumstance that's gonna help you learn that lesson if you don't get it then all right no he's a loving father he's like no i'll give you a lesson and the topic of the lesson can be the same thing but i'll present it in this way i'll present it in this way because i want you to get it because in us oh, yielding to obedience in christ we grow more in his image we grow more and more in his image and then other people can see it and then he can be glorified and so he really cares about the issues of the heart and he deals with them and if you let him and you stand firm and you let him deal with it deal with whatever it is that he's trying to cultivate in you uh so much more glorious than trying to rush out of a season and then guess what into a new into the same season again learning the same lesson all right guys thank you so much for tuning into this video i hope these 10 things that i have learned in my 10 years of walking with jesus have been some benefit to you i pray that you have it unctions you to just sit back and think what have i learned how how can i grow how can i grow in relationship with christ that i will be able to love him love others better um again i'll pray that you will find these videos beneficial if you're enjoying these videos and coming to watch please make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell um, so that you can get all the updates from my channel i post every wednesday and then even some fridays i might upload a little vlog for you but again be blessed and i'll see you next wednesday